Hello everyone, I'm Nick Shepherd. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to tell you some more about Erica. She has started her college course in English Literature and this morning she met her tutor. I'm going to begin this story in the present simple tense, which we often use for stories in the past, to bring them alive. Erica walks into the main building, climbs up the stairs to the second floor, walks along the corridor and knocks on the door. Come in, says a deep voice. The voice comes from low down, near the floor. Hmm, he must be looking in his bottom drawer, thinks Erica. She opens the door slightly and in front of her she sees a pair of shoes. She opens the door fully and sees that her teacher is standing on his head. Hello, he says, smiling. Uh, hello, she replies. Excuse me, but why are you upside down? He stands up. They both sit down and he tells her that standing on your head makes you more intelligent. Hmm, hope so. Well, let's get down to business. My name's Michael. You must be Erica. That's right. First of all, Erica, where are you living? At present I'm staying in a B&B &B in town, but I'm hoping to move into college soon. Where do your parents live? They live in Stratford-upon-Avon. Aha! The birthplace of William Shakespeare. Do you know Shakespeare? Er, uh, no. He's dead. <laughs> I mean, have you read his plays? I've read Hamlet, that's all. You haven't read any comedies or history plays? No, I haven't. Well, Hamlet is a beginning. Did you like it? Yes, I did. OK, we'll leave them now and get down to business ourselves, looking at some verb tenses we used in the story. First, the present simple tense, she goes. In this story, we use the present simple in a special way. We sometimes use it to describe what's happening right now. I lift my arms and bend my knees, like this. Or, another one, Kate passes the baby to William, who holds it in his arms. And there's a picture. We can also use the present simple to make a story in the past feel as if it's happening right now. And that's what we did in this story. Erica opens the door and in front of her she sees a pair of shoes. That's what we wrote. But we can also say Erica opened the door and in front of her she saw a pair of shoes. I could tell the whole story in the past tense and I will now tell you the first part. Here's the original and here's the past tense version. Erica walked into the main building, climbed up the stairs to the second floor, walked along the corridor and knocked on the door. Come in, said a deep voice. The voice came from low down, near the floor. He must be looking in his bottom drawer, thought Erica. She opened the door slightly and in front of her she saw a pair of shoes. She opened the door fully and saw that her teacher was standing on his head. Hello, he said, smiling, and so on. And now for the present perfect. I'm going to build up a little drawing to illustrate three sentences from the story. First, I'll put past, present and future, then a timeline to show time passing. And here's the first sentence from the story. She has been in college for two weeks. That's to say, she started in the college two weeks ago and she's still there. Here's another sentence from the story. Have you read his plays? And the answer, I've read Hamlet. Now she started and finished reading Hamlet in the past, but her teacher Michael wants to find out what she knows now. I think that's enough for today, but as the story of Verica develops, I'll be looking at all the different verb tenses and how we use them, and lots of other language points too. I hope you like them, and let me know if there's anything you would like me to mention. OK, I'm done. Bye for now.